Hello everyone, this is DinfinityX, and welcome to episode 11 in my Minecraft world. I think it's 11, I'm not sure. I made this mistake when I was recording this original audio to begin with. Once again, I have screwed up, and somehow my audio is now gone from my clip. Um, the clips I recorded for the beginning of this uh this episode. What I was trying to describe here is that I spent all week AFKing for stone because work was just a bit too much this week and I really didn't have too much brain power to put into anything else. So I just AFK'd, got a bunch of stone, and I'm going to work on the the cavern or I guess cavern is what you could call it. I've coming up with so many different names for essentially caves in uh, this series. Cove. Cove is kind of what I was going for. I'm going to fill in this uh, lake here and build out the the inside of the cove. And it's just unfortunate that I lost all my audio because I was really hoping that I would have these issues fixed. And I don't know why it stopped recording my microphone. It's really annoying that it did uh and i'm honestly considering getting a different microphone at this point because it's just kind of it's kind of ruined everything for me because i've recorded clips and i just recently realized that one of the episodes i did i think it was like five or six like there's three or four clips in the middle that just don't have audio and that's not acceptable to me um I want to do these, and I want to do them at least somewhat quality-based. And it's just not doing what I want it to do. And now even my video editing software, when I'm trying to do this voiceover, is completely screwing up, and I realize I have a zombie in the game that is currently killing me, so hold on. Yeah, I completely forgot I was just still standing on a hill in the game. Anyway... My video editing software sucks. My microphone sucks. I need to look into getting new ones. Here I was trying to describe how this system that I have now, this mob farm, is probably four to five times more efficient than the one I had because the storage is just, it's its not adequate. Uh, I've got eight double chests and one overnight session almost filled up one whole slice of it. And I only had like 10 or 12 in the old one and... It took days and days and days of AFKing to fill up that. So, yeah, it's. I need to figure out a better solution or do something with this uh, storage system I have because it's just currently not adequate. And I think I should be coming back into real time. And I was talking about how much I hate Enderman here. I, I'm not very good at voiceovers, if you can't tell, so I'm sorry this one uh, had to be inserted at the beginning of this episode, but there was just very little I could do, because I, I've already made massive progress on the little cove here. So, I finished the lake, but I've also discovered that I have made a uh, rather interestingly designed glowing farm not by not by purpose or anything but i know that glow squid only spawn uh in water below y64 which this is 62 with stone above them and i'm guessing this counts which would make sense because of the uh the caves and clips update that's coming out but yeah Glow squid keep spawning in there, and those three oxalotls that weren't there five minutes ago keep spawning in and killing them. So that's that's interesting. I don't think I can necess necessarily capitalize on that, unfortunately, because that would require putting uh, making this function over form, and I don't want to do that. But it's an interesting development nonetheless. All right, so I have this one side done. There's a few pieces that I still want to fix. Uh, mainly, I need to remove the glow, not glowstone, uh, the sea lanterns from around the edge here. And I need to fix up a few places. And I think I'm going to hide 
the the green and replace it with glow berries and make it so it's kind of naturally lit up like uh, back here where we have this cool little glowing pattern going down touching into the water so it can be seen from you know far away but then all I have to do is make the entrance right here and yeah see look look at all the uh, the this glow ink just laying on the beach here uh, but then I just have to connect up this around to that, and then I'm going to terraform that with some uh, dripstone blocks, and that'll be that. Or this that'll be the cave done, at least. A, a small portion of it. But yeah, I, I'm quite happy with it, how this is, uh, this is progressing for today. Now, the next thing I want to add is potentially some dripstone in here, because I think that will make it look very cool but I don't want to completely overdo it and I need to kind of get up here I think I think one maybe right there now that I put that there I don't think it's actually dripping water so that's not gonna work no I need you you're you're valuable at this moment in time uh, let's see so there's definitely one right there we can put some, we can put some, let's uh, get something to scaffold out there. We can put some right around here too, like right there, right there. I want places where it's definitely going to drip and grow. Uh, right there looks good. Well, come on, there we go. In, in the corner. It doesn't have to be where it'll potentially drip and grow. And I'll get some more to add some more ambiance around this. Um, that was one of the things that I haven't done yet because I this is about all the dripstone I have is seven. But I want those to kind of grow and I'll potentially look at, well, when I do the dripstone down there, I'll, I'll add some more to give it kind of a, uh, a jagged look, which hopefully will make it look really good. Right now, I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to curve this because I want back there to be flat, but up here to kind of grow. So, and I also wanted it to not be right up against this, hence why I'm kind of doing this indented in look around the the little the waterfall there. But I think we're getting to the point where I can start pulling it back in, and I don't want to necessarily block up anything that needs to not be blocked up at this point taking a look at it from this side uh once those dripstones grow and i get some on the floor as well which i may do right now just uh, i might just put some dripstone around there and let them grow naturally in fact that's probably a good idea because i am going to replace all of this with dripstone or at least this side leading into the cave to kind of make it look like there used to be a lake here and kind of receded into this uh, I think that'll look cool, but yeah, from out here, after I get all this green covered up, I think it's going to look rather good, and then I can come in and kind of re-greenify it, I guess, or maybe I'll leave that there, and I I'll figure out some way to, to make this all look, look good and decent. I just kind of want to get it done so that I have something to go off of in the future. So with a little bit of dripstone in place, I think that's definitely, obviously I won't have this uh, sea lantern here. I don't know why I left it there. Pick up all that here real quick too. Uh, but yeah, it's it's looking, looking good. I want to, now I'm torn if I want to make this really green and mossy because, I mean, it is going to be kind of an underground cave. I'm going to sidestep here just because... Did it? Oh, I was going to say, did it despawn while I was not looking? No. Um, yeah, it's... I'll have to play around and see what I like when I get this little section finished off. Because I think I'm just going to connect it up now and make it, yeah, make it look cohesive. All right. So I have finished the interior of the cave, well, cave cavern, lakefront cavern here. Uh, I need to do a lot of terraforming on the inside, but at least it is not just 
blank and hollow into the mountain now. Sorry, I hiccuped right when I was saying now right then. Uh, that was a bit interesting. Uh, so yeah, the ball that I just ran into, if we fly up here. So now I'd at least have a little bit of little bit of character to it, I guess. I don't know. I'm going to probably greenify all of this down here and maybe even make a little trickle or a little creek that comes off and goes into the lake right here. That could be a good idea. But I think I want to build up a little pillar maybe right there of deep slate or something, or maybe even dripstone to kind of connect into that so it doesn't just look floating so that when you come in from down here, you know, there's a little bit of break and you can see the little cove right there and the pond with all of the uh, axolotls that spawn and murdify uh, glow squid. So I'm going to probably go through and take down all the sea lanterns now, maybe go get some dripstone and yeah, like right here would be a good place to kind of put a little dripstone area to give it some character. And then I think I'm going to moss the front of this uh, just to give it a lot more character. So yeah, that's the next steps. I'm going to go work on that after I uh, get myself some uh, more glow squid ink because I have gotten more glow squid ink in the few minutes that I've spent hunting glow squid in this little pond than I did when I floated around in the ocean for like an hour. It probably wasn't an hour, it was like 20 minutes, but still, that is a lot of glow squid ink that I have gotten now. I may not even have to automate it, I may just have to come down here and swim around every once in a while. One of the nice things about, I'm on the wrong thing here, Masons now, is that they sell dripstone. So I can just come in here and get a ton of dripstone. In fact, okay, not all of them sell it, which is unfortunate, but is there was an Enderman in here. That's odd. Yeah, so unfortunately not all of them sell it, but the ones that do sell it, I get a stack every time I buy some. So that that's good and makes this uh, a whole lot easier because the the one downside to them is that obviously they uh everything else that you would might necessarily want you can only buy in what is it things of 12 yeah so which is not not exactly great but it's it's not terrible and that's why i want to have a lot of masons up there and i'm hoping to get when i say up there i mean my trading hall I'm hoping to get enough to get every single terracotta and glazed terracotta. That would be ideal. And that way I can get a ton of bricks and chiseled stone and all of that. All without having to do too much work. And speaking of which, I need chiseled stone for something else I'm doing. Although I don't have any space for it. Well, this is an interesting discovery. Um, I knew about this because I've obviously torched it up and I just released a cave chicken. Um, but this is the entrance of this is right over a spawner. I, I knew it was here because I've caved through the area lighting things up, but ugh, stupid Enderman. Uh, this is a spider spawner. And let me make sure that we don't get on any unnecessary spawns. But in theory, oh, there's disks and name tags. Obviously, I didn't clear this out. I just found it and left. Um, but in theory, would I be able to fill this up and force the spiders to spawn in the cave entrance? Or what could I do with this? Because I really don't need a spider spawner. I mean, yes, it would be nice in theory, but I've got that stupid massive farm over there that overproduces everything. What could I do with a spider spawner in this area? Especially since this is the entrance. It'd be kind of nice to have spiders roaming around on the outside, or even on the inside, but I'll have to think of something to do with that. It could be, uh, could be interesting. Now that the at least some of the dripstone is in place, it's starting to take shape. Uh, I think it's going to look a whole lot. I just fell off of that. Whole lot nicer once I get 
the top of this kind of greenified and kind of a marbled look with the uh, with the greenery. And then I have got to figure out, or I'm going to put some dripstone and stuff in there. I kind of want some stalagmites hanging down from inside. Uh, we'll just have to see how it plays out by ear. But so far, this is looking quite good. Now, I just need to find a good lighting solution for um, inside of here, outside of torches, because I don't want torches spammed everywhere. And I want to look back at Cub's, Cub Fan's videos, because I know he's been doing his whole valley. And there's blocks that go really well with this dripstone that I can uh, mar or put in here to break up the pattern and make it a look a little bit more a little bit more f fancy and realistic, at least to some some extent, and just kind of make this place start looking a lot more, a lot more interesting. I guess would be the best word to go for that. I, I don't know what else I was gonna say there. All right, so my little creek turned into uh, a, a little bit more, and I don't hate it. That that's the problem is I I don't hate that at all in fact i've got a bunch of bones and i'm going to uh make that a little bit more foresty and in fact i may add some more trees going up the the mountain anyway so i want to really see what that looks like and if i have to chop it all down and replace it all it's it's not that big of a deal i mean i've built a whole mountain it's just a few blocks so I went through and added a lot more trees and I kind of changed up how the waterfall went and I've got to say I like that even more with it kind of snaking through the trees there. It just makes it look so nice and I've still got to add a few more trees around the front here and but I don't know if I'm going to do something over there. I may like it look more like dead over there. I don't know. But I'm liking the way the the front of the, the mountain looks right now, especially with the lake and everything. It just looks so nice. Let's see if we can't go down one block just to kind of appreciate it here. But yeah, this is, uh, this is turning out to be uh, not exactly what I expected, but almost better than what I expected. Now, to end out this episode, I want to talk about one thing that I kind of knew was a thing, but didn't really, and then forgot about it and was reminded. Uh, clerics kind of suck. Uh, so if we look at this dude, he's got a trade of one rotten flesh per thing. So if I do that, and then buy the glow or the redstone... Well, he's, he's not going to restock right now. Hold on, let me see if I can... Actually, I don't know what time it is. It sounds like they should be restocking. Oh, yeah, he restocked. Okay, so it's... As soon as I did this, I went and was checking the prices and trying to buy and sell all the rotten flesh. And it could be because I was working in the area that they reset, but their prices had gone up to, like, 50 almost a stack of rotten flesh per emerald which i knew was a thing i just you know completely forgot about and as you can see this is kind of the the plan i have for this is just to sell the rotten flesh buy the redstone or the oh come on buy the redstone or the lapis or you know the experience potions glowstone whatever that way I can uh, get a lot of resources with very minimal use, or use, in, in a, a decent amount of time. Have they recycled? No. Nope. It sounds like they have, but they haven't. Uh, the problem I had, like I said, was it went up to over almost a stack of rotten flesh per trade, which I knew was a thing. And really shouldn't be an issue if I'm able to get this thing running relatively quick and efficient. Oh, I don't have any space left in this little chest here. We'll do that. Um, and that's just something I'm going to have to work out. And like I said, with 28 of these, it's not going to be that big of an issue. Because by the time I trade through all of them, that's a lot of emeralds that are just going to be 
stored away, especially if I only do one trade per per go. And that's my thought is I'll just do one trade route, maybe two a day, getting red, redstone mostly, but also lapis, the enchanting, the glowstone, all of that. But I still have to fill out all of this with uh, villagers, and that that's going to take some time, especially since, what was I looking at? Well over 100? It's 28 times 4, so that's... Hold on, I can do math. 112 villagers I need to bring up here. The next batch of clerics I think I'm going to steal from the old trading hall and... Uh, bring up them because that's at least 10 that I can put in this little system and hopefully do a little bit faster and that'll mean I only need hold on I can do math again uh, 11 more villagers to do to finish out the clerics same with the masons the masons I'm going to have a decent amount um, and I don't think I'm going to double convert them or, or do the whole five because I don't think it's really necessary. So I'm just going to convert them once and bring them over. So I've got, I think if my math, if I remember correctly, I think six of them are good. And then four of them have duplicate trades. I'll have to go back and check. Uh, that's going to be a big issue with the Masons is I'm going to have to bring them up here, check their trades. And if I don't like them, they're going to go probably off the side of the building. But... And in fairness, same with the Fletchers. The Butchers, I'm just going to bring over. Uh, the Farmers, I'm going to bring over the good ones. I want ones that have potato, pumpkin, and melon trades. Because these are going to be the ones that get the most amount of emeralds for me. Because I can go through, get pumpkins, emeralds, and carrots, and still end up with a hefty profit. Um, where I can put it into buying from the Masons, or the Fletchers, or whatever. But... That's going to do it for this episode. Sorry it was a little less folk or a little less content than what I had thought I was going to do for this one, but I ended up kind of being rushed. I still want to get that Nether Portal room built. I still want to do um get the rest of the mountain filled in. That's why I AFK'd for stone all week. And that shouldn't be too bad. I mean, I've only got like a third of the mountain done. So I've, I've still got a lot of work ahead of me. But until next time, this was D-Infinity X. I hope you have a good rest of your day.